Yeah, I'm looking at it now. It looks like uh, there's been a fire to a high rise in Brooklyn. Um, don't know how many units are involved. Looks like the elevator was involved. It was a three alarm fire. Yeah, if you could jump on that right away, I'd sure appreciate it. Thank so this is how I make a living off grid. I've worked in financial services, insurance for mm, over 25 years. And uh, used to be a time when I had to be in an office or had to be on scene, uh, you know, or something like that. But now, because I sort of examine the work of other people, I can do it remotely like this. And it works out nice. So, you know, I begin my morning with a cup of coffee and, you know, reviewing current events and things like that. And uh, usually fairly in the, early in the morning, I'll start off the computer. The first thing I do is I go check Buzz uh, to make sure that Buzz's power is, is adequate, you know, because we use power at night and things like that. And uh, I often start before the sun is up, so I want to make sure that there's no issue with Buzz before I do that. Uh, I'll come in here, light off the computer, and um, start working. Um, I have 5G internet here. I'm fortunate that way. So I have pretty good internet access. Uh, and then, um, you know, I, I have pretty good systems that I use. They're proprietary for the, for the uh, firms that I do work with. But um, they're, they're pretty reliable. The only time I really have problem is, uh, say, in the winter when there's like blowing snow or something like that and the winds are high, it tends to interfere with the internet for some reason. I don't know why. But uh, for the most part, it's pretty reliable. Um, the thing I like about this is that I can get up, you know, whenever I need to <clears throat> and take care of a thing. Uh, for instance, today I'm baking a couple of loaves of bread. I started it yesterday, but I had to end, I had to stop because it got cloudy. But um, anyway, so yeah, I, I can get up, I can water the plants in the greenhouse quickly. I can, you know, respond to something that one of the dogs needs, and they're so spoiled they always need something. It seems like, and uh, you know, or just whatever. Uh, so, it, you know, it's not a bad life. I work an eight-hour day. I, I hold myself to that. I could work more. Um, but, uh, there are things I need to do around here. So I'm, I try to be disciplined about keeping to my eight hour day. Um, I typically don't take a lunch or if I do, it's a very short one. I just make something to eat really quickly and sit here and eat it while I'm working. If I eat it all, um, like I said, I'm baking bread. Okay. So I've got my all American sun oven out here warming, uh, you know, preheating. And right now it's uh, right about 300 degrees. Uh, and I brought the loaves out here, but I need to let them rise some more because I guess I used some old yeast or something like that. Very slow to rise. I'll go ahead and spray it with some uh, water before I actually put the bread in. But right now I'm letting it sit out here to, uh, it's warmer outside than it is inside. I'm going to let it rise some more. And that's how it is. Because most of my work, um, involves... Uh, businesses on the East Coast and I'm at mountain time I start pretty early in the morning to match their business hours which means that I stop my work fairly early in the after, about mid-afternoon and then I'm free you know for the afternoon and evening uh, to do whatever I want to do or need to do here at contentment and it works out really good particularly right now during this time of the year when the winds have quit for the most part the weather is nice and the days are long. So, you know, if I quit work at say 3 p.m., I can work until, you know, almost 9 p.m. outdoors um, and, and get a few things done. So, you know, this isn't a bad, uh, it's not a bad deal for me. I realize that everybody can't do it. I realize that everybody can't have a remote job and, uh, and you know, and be able to live off grid. I'm fortunate in that I can, but I couldn't always. You know, there were most of my career I had to be present, you know, physically present for something. And so I was not able to do this. I wasn't able to have this kind of lifestyle and do that kind of work. But um, yeah, so this is how I do it. Okay, so my work day is done. I'm going to turn off the computer. And uh, here lately, if, the, if it's been really windy outside or if the weather's been bad, 
Um, I will uh, stay here at the computer. I'll turn the com work computer off. I'll turn on the personal computer. And I've been working on uh, house plans. Um, we have house plans here. And I've been working on the materials list, you know, things that we're going to need to be able to build uh, the house. So I'm putting together a materials list little by little, working on it one element at a time, <laughs> trying to figure out what we're going to need. And uh, so far, that's going out. It's going okay. But uh, uh, today, uh, it's a little windy, but I can work on the screen porch. I have an auger that's acting up, a gas-powered auger, so I need to bring it in, figure out why it's not running right, and uh, get that fixed, because I need to drill some post holes. Um, and then um, I'll water the plants again in the greenhouse, because it's so dry out here. We need to water our plants twice a day. Yes, even the ones in the greenhouse. That's how dry it is here. Current humidity, 10%. That's one thing about living uh, off-grid. There, you know, or in the country or whatever, there is always something that needs to be done. Always something that needs to be fixed or done or built or, you know, whatever. And uh, I guess I wouldn't have it any other way. So, if you're watching a video about how I make a living off-grid, <clears throat> then I assume you're asking yourself, is this something I can do? Can I live off-grid? Can I make a living off-grid? And the answer is, uh, if you're willing to work, you know, yes, uh, anybody can. Now, will it be easy? Well, probably not. And, um, and that's just how it is. So you have to determine, if you're asking this question for yourself, you have to determine what uh, ways you can adapt your career or your work life uh, to fit something like this. And uh, also, um, how flexible you are, um, and what your financial needs are, and you know things like that. This is what we're enjoying. Uh, we do have a goal, we do have a purpose, and we are working toward it every day, little by little. Um, but it's not going to happen overnight. This house is going to take years to build, because we're doing it ourselves. Uh, we're not hiring contractors. If at all possible, we're not going to hire any contractors to build this home. Um, and there are two of us out here. So, I mean, it's going to take a while to be built. Uh, you know, if you watch Green Dream Project, there's a young couple, you know, who's out there building their own place. There are just two of them out there doing it. And uh, they're having the time, of the time of their life. And so are we. Uh, you may also catch another channel uh, called Midlife Prices. They are in Arizona, not too far away from Green Dream Project, and they're building a straw bale home, just the two of them, uh, husband and wife. And so, and it's taking time. Um, so we don't expect this to happen overnight, and I don't think you should either. Uh, if you're thinking that you're going to come out here and, you know, automatically have an instant homestead, boy, not only do I fear for you, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think, but I don't think it can happen, because there are so. If you've never lived this life before, there are so many things you don't know that you cannot anticipate. Uh, for instance, with us, we never anticipated having the kinds of mechanical problems with uh, vehicles and equipment that we have. We never anticipated that, and I mean, it's been a huge. Uh, it's been a huge stumbling block for us. It's been a huge hurdle, um, you know, trying to trying to get past that and get to the point where we have uh, dependable vehicles because we just keep working on them and keep working on them. It's like, when is this going to end? Going back to the question, uh, can you make a living off-grid? Yes. If you can work remotely or if you can cut your commute to, you know, fewer days a week, that is if you live remotely. Um, or if you can work online like I do, just things like that. Yes, you can. Um, most people, I think, uh, will have to determine to lower their standard of living a little bit. Conduct triage on your life and you know what is really important for us, what do we really want, and begin cutting out all those things out of your life that... Uh, that are just going to hinder you uh, when you do live off-grid. 
Uh, there's a uh, famous quote by Bruce Lee that that says, "Hack away at the essentials." You know, um, pare your life down uh, to what's really important and what you really need, and and go from there. Our costs out here, our fixed costs, are very minimal. Um, they are our, our annual property taxes, um, insurances. Um, we pay a monthly fee to rent the container that we keep our tools and building materials in. That's pretty much it. So, um, you know, our, our costs are very low. But to get there, you know, we had to get rid of everything. Your understanding and your perspectives are going to change as you move toward this. You're going to learn more and more. You're going to gain understanding and you're going to realize that, you know, this isn't exactly how I envisioned uh, living it. But that still doesn't mean you shouldn't plan, get ready, anticipate, and learn all you can, and begin doing a few little things, uh, you know, begin moving in that direction, because that's what gives you the perspective um, and the uh, and the skill and knowledge uh, to uh, to make that jump when you're finally ready. So anyway, let's talk for me. I got to get out there and get some stuff done. But uh, thank you for watching. Uh, we certainly appreciate you. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave them below. If you have any questions, I will try to answer them. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye.